Hey guys, Mike Robertson here with iFast University. This month I'm gonna be talking about mistakes that I've made in the past. Now, as I always joke around about, I could give you probably literally thousands of mistakes that I've made over the years, but Lance, Bill, everybody else, they want me to focus on one. So the one mistake that I'm gonna talk about today is improper rotary core training. Uh, whether you train basketball players, baseball, uh, volleyball, softball, swimming, any sport that requires rotation requires you to have a strong and stable core in all three planes. Now, when I got started, didn't really understand this whole concept. Uh, coming up with a biomechanics degree, I knew we had three planes of motion, and it only made sense that we should train the core and all those different planes of motion. So yeah, you're gonna flex and extend, you're gonna do crunches and sit-ups and back extensions. We did frontal plane stuff, so we're doing side bends and sacks on side bends. And of course, it's not complete if you're not training rotation, so we're throwing some Russian twists in there for good measure. Obviously, you guys know that's probably not how we're going to do things these days. The work of Stuart McGill and other very, very smart people have led us to believe that stabilization is the best thing to do. So that's mistake number one, training all this motion through the core. The second piece is jumping right into rotary core training. As we're going to talk about here in just a little bit, there's obviously the progression that we have to go through. And it's my opinion that so many clients, so many athletes don't own their sagittal plane first. So even though we're not going to cover sagittal plane today, just know and understand that you have to unlock that sagittal plane first before you move forward from there. All right, guys, I brought Anthony in to help me uh, work through the Paloff press progression that I use with my clients and my athletes here at IFAST. So we talked about the developmental progression early on. And the reason you start with supine and prone positions is because you've got a ton of external feedback from the ground. Not only do you have a ton of support, but it also gives you this kinesthetic feedback as to where your body is in space. So while I haven't used this a ton, it's something that I've been introducing early on in my rotary training progressions, and I think it's really helping my clients and athletes. So this is a supine Paloff press. So Anthony is going to be as parallel to the stack, or excuse me, perpendicular to the stack as he can be. He's going to go into a three month position. Now, I don't know if this is a pure three month position like DNS would uh, coach it or cue it, but what I like here is active flexion through the hips, knees, and ankles. So, what that does is we talked about extended clients. Everybody's extended, so if we can introduce flexion back into their body, I think it's a good thing. So you can see he's got this good three-month position, good flexion, and then what he's gonna do is exhale and reach long. Perfect. Now, you can do this for reps. If somebody is weak or deconditioned, I prefer to hold it for time. So generally 15 to 20 seconds at a clip. Make sure you're training both sides, but really, it's very, very simple. Once you're locked in, hold this position and make sure not to rotate side to side. 